This video will cover the topic, finding the intercepts, asymptotes, domain, and range from the graph of a rational function. Before we begin, let's just take a quick moment to review some terminology. Remember, an intercept is the distance from the origin to the point at which a curve or line intersects an axis. An asymptote is a line that a curve approaches as it heads towards infinity. In this image, our asymptote is depicted by the red dashed line. The domain is the set of all the numbers that appear as x-coordinates of points on the graph. And finally, the range is the set of all the numbers that appear as y-coordinates of points on the graph. Now that we've reviewed, let's look at some example problems. In this example, we are being asked to analyze the graph of the rational function shown below and use the graph to determine the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, domain and range, and x and y intercepts. Oh my gosh, this problem looks really difficult. There's so much to do. I know it may look like there's a lot to it at first, but if we break it down piece by piece, it won't take too long. Let's start by looking at part A. Part A is asking us to write the equation for the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Recall, an asymptote is a line that a curve approaches as it heads towards infinity. Let's start by looking for a vertical asymptote. Remember, vertical refers to up and down, so we are looking for asymptotes parallel to the y-axis. Do you see anywhere on this graph, in terms of the y-axis, where the blue graph lines approach an x-value, but don't fully, as they either increase or decrease towards infinity? If you do, where on the graph is this happening? Huh. It looks like this graph extends towards negative infinity at x is equal to 5. Is that right? Correct. This graph decreases without bound towards negative infinity at x is equal to 5. This means our vertical asymptote is x is equal to 5. Now, let's repeat the same process for the second part of A. In the second part of A, we will be looking for the horizontal asymptote. Remember, Horizontal refers to side to side. So, we're looking for an asymptote parallel to the x-axis. Do you see anywhere on this graph where the blue graph lines approach a y-value, but don't fully, as they either increase or decrease towards infinity? Um, it looks like these graph lines extend towards negative infinity, but doesn't pass y is equal to zero. Does this mean the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero? Yes, that's correct. Our answer is y is equal to zero because the graph gets very, very close to y is equal to zero, but never quite touches it. Let's move on to part b now. In part b, we are asked to find the domain and range of the function pictured by the given graph. Recalling that the domain is the set of all numbers that appear as x-coordinates of points on the graph, let's attempt to find the domain of this rational function. An important thing to note about rational functions with no holes, such as the one we have here, is that the domain is a set of all numbers except for the values at the vertical asymptotes. In part A, we found that the vertical asymptote is x is equal to 5. This means that our domain is a set of all real numbers except for 5. This can also be seen by projecting the graph onto the x-axis. Therefore, the numbers that appear as x values of points on the graph make up the two intervals, negative infinity to 5, union 5 to infinity. Now, let's try to find our range. Remembering that the range is a set of all the numbers that appear as y-coordinates of points on the graph. To find the range, we project the graph onto the y-axis. The numbers that appear as y-values of points on the graph will make up our range. So, our range of this function is negative infinity to zero. Let's move on to part c. Part c is asking for us to find the x and y-intercepts. Remember, an intercept is where the graph crosses the axis. Let's start by looking for the x-intercept. Do you see anywhere where the graph crosses the x-axis? It looks like it gets really close to the x-axis. But I don't think it crosses the x-axis anywhere. Does this mean there is no x-intercept? Yes, that's correct. Because there is no place where the graph of this rational function crosses the x-axis, there is no x-intercept. Now. Do you see anywhere where the graph crosses the y-axis? Um, it looks like it crosses the y-axis at y is equal to negative 1. Yes, that's correct. The graph crosses the y-axis at y is equal to negative 1, as depicted here. 
This means that the y-intercept is y is equal to negative 1. And we're all done! Our final solution looks like the following. Now that we've worked through it once, let's go through and check out one more example. In this example, we are being asked to analyze the graph of a rational function shown below, and use the graph to determine the vertical and horizontal asymptote, domain and range, and x and y intercepts. We are going to follow the same process that we did before, so, let's start by looking for the vertical asymptote. Do you see anywhere on this graph where the blue graph lines approach an x value, but don't fully, as they either increase or decrease towards infinity? If you do, where on the graph is this happening? Um, it looks like the graph approaches x is equal to 3 from both sides, but never fully touches x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 would be our vertical asymptote, correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, let's repeat the same process for the horizontal asymptote. Do you see anywhere on this graph where the blue graph lines approach a y value, but don't fully as they either increase or decrease towards infinity? Yes, the graph approaches y is equal to 1 from both sides, but never fully touches y is equal to 1. So y is equal to 1 is the horizontal asymptote. Great work! See, you're starting to get the hang of it. Now, let's look at part b. By looking at this graph, let's determine the domain. Remember, for rational functions, the domain is a set of all real numbers except for the values of the vertical asymptotes. Oh, okay. So because our vertical asymptote is x is equal to 3, then our domain is all real numbers except for x is equal to 3. Correct. This is denoted in the following manner. We can apply the same logic to the range. Okay. So because our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1, then our range is all real numbers except for y is equal to 1. That's right. Again, this is denoted in the following manner. Let's move on to part c, where we are asked to find the intercepts. Let's start by looking for the x-intercept. Do you see anywhere where the graph crosses the x-axis? The graph crosses the x-axis at x is equal to 6. So 6 is our x-intercept, right? Yes, that's correct. Great work. Now, do you see anywhere where the graph crosses the y-axis? Um, it looks like it crosses the y-axis at y is equal to 2. Yes, that's correct. The graph crosses the y-axis at y is equal to 2, as depicted here. This means that the y-intercept is y is equal to 2. Now that we've found all the solutions, let's check out the final answer to our problem. Awesome. I think I'm really starting to understand this a lot better. The key to these problems is making sure I'm using the graph, given to help determine the solutions to the problems. I'm so glad. Yes, the graph is key to determining the intercepts, asymptotes, domain, and range.